Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Rule the Waves, a strategy game which puts you in the shoes of a Grand Admiral of one of the great powers during the uh, sort of most famous of naval arms race periods, that being the run-up to World War I, and the game goes a little bit beyond that. We are currently playing as Russia. We just got out of a war with the Austro-Hungarian Empire. We were victorious, but we didn't uh, come away with any spoils because the Austrians didn't have any colonies for us to take, and we didn't end up uh, with enough political points to do uh, damage in the way of taking Albania, which was the only province we could take in the first place. Our navy is somewhat obsolete by this point. It is 1905. Almost all of our navy was constructed as sort of the default starting fleet. We do have a few vessels here which were constructed more recently, uh, some heavy cruisers, uh, and we have a few battleships under construction as well of the THG class. 20 knot uh, behemoths, 18,000 tons, four main 12-inch guns. Uh, these things will be, I think, pretty strong battleships once they're completed. The problem is by now they're already obsolete. Uh, these things won't be coming off the ways for another six to nine months. And if we look at the Almanac here, we can see that Germany, Britain, and the United States are already building battleships, uh, and the French are building a battle cruiser. So this pre-Dreadnought battleship era is already beyond us, and we need to start considering some new designs, uh, which will allow us to really tap into that. Um, if we were to go ahead and design a new ship... Uh, and we were to go in sort of the battleship vein. I'm not sure if we actually have the technology to do that. If we auto-design this, what does it tell us? Oh, so maybe we do. We could actually go ahead and build a dreadnought battleship uh, if we want to. So that might be something we need to consider. Our heavy cruiser, I think, is good for now. Um, the new heavy cruiser class, which we've uh, uh, built. Let's see here, actually. What do we have? These newer... Uh, the Czar class, for example, uh, has four 9-inch guns. I think the 9-inch guns are a little bit better quality. Uh, if we take a look here, one of our key uh, restrictions or key limitations is our naval guns here. You can see anything above 10 inches is given a penalty in terms of quality because uh, the Russian uh, Empire doesn't have very good uh, gun quality, I guess. Uh, we've done quite a bit of research here in some other sectors around machinery and armor and uh, sort of fire control, but our gunnery still lags behind, despite the fact that we've so, uh, basically put in substantial resources to try and catch it up. Additionally, we are in the in the red right now with finances. I'm actually going to go ahead and put some intelligence across the board, uh, but the one thing is we've got $76 million in the bank, so we've got enough money right now uh, to get us through uh, the next you know, few months or few 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 turns here as these ships start coming off the ways. Um, so let's see here. What are we going to do? We've got some ships that are kind of at sea. We have some uh, vessels that are currently um, damaged. The Bayan, or the Bayan uh, cruiser looks like it suffered some damage. Uh, it's out in the Northeast Pacific, I guess, Northeast Asia. Um... We don't have any submarines. We haven't done any of that. We did lose a few ships in the last war, two light cruisers and one destroyer. The Austrians lost far worse than us. Uh, they have 15 battleships. Wow. With two building, nine cruisers with seven buildings, six light cruisers with one building, 31 destroyers, seven minesweepers, six submarines, and 11 coastal batteries. But they also lost quite a bit in the last battle. It was really a cruiser war. Uh, and they lost some five heavy cruisers, two light cruisers, some armed merchant cruisers, and a single destroyer. Uh, their battleship fleet really wasn't hindered at all, uh, but I'd rather avoid another war with Austria, because frankly it just doesn't make a lot of sense. There's nothing really to be gained with a war with Austria, which is somewhat interesting when you consider that they're kind of Russia's principal rival, uh, and historically anyway, that seems like a bit of a problem uh, from a gameplay mechanic. Um, but I guess, why don't we go ahead and do that? Why don't we design a new ship uh, for our navies? I'm not sure if I want it to be a battle cruiser or a battleship. I guess I'll go with a battleship. Mm. Could we go with a battle cruiser that has 10-inch guns? I don't know if there'd be any point in that. It would certainly be a cruiser killer, but would there be any value in having it in the line of battle? How fast could we move? Get up to 19,000 tons. Battle cruiser, make it faster. 28 knots. 
We can make it 29 knots. Ship identified as a heavy cruiser. Change type and continue. Uh, it would be a damn expense. This would basically be like a Blucher uh, heavy cruiser. It would have six a six gun broadside of 10 inch guns. It would be incredibly fast, almost 30 knots. Um, it's a tempting, tempting thing to consider. Um, if we change this to a heavy cruiser, what would it tell, it would tell us it would be okay. So we could design this. She'd have six inch secondary guns, 16 of them in casemates. I'd rather them be in turrets. Um, wow, really shrinks them. What if we put them in double turrets? Could we do that? Would we get penalties? Rate of fire for secondary guns is reduced due to lack of suitable training and elevation gear. What if we change them to single turrets? Is it still the same penalty? Slightly overweight, but... We could do that. Have a whole bunch of secondary guns in turrets. Slightly overweight. We could switch them down to 5-inch guns to save on weight. Still be a 29 knot super fast heavy cruiser. With relatively heavy guns. 10-inch guns on a heavy cruiser is pretty pretty strong, I think. We don't have super-firing turrets, so in one sense that kind of makes sense. Because we can't shoot over each other, so again, a six-gun broadside is somewhat limiting. Yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of torn on that one. I think we'll hold off for now. Let's go a few more months here. I want to try and get through to the beginning of 1906. We completed with our best fire control. Yes. I want to kind of try and speed forward to 1906 and see if we actually are able to get any better technology for our turrets. A revolution in an African country has left some of our nationals stranded. What do we do? Join an international squadron, resolve the crisis via diplomatic means, or send a strong squadron to bombard the capital. Yeah, let's do that. It's going to tick off some of our rivals, but gives us some increased prestige, which at the, at the end of the day, the name of the game is to have as much prestige as possible. Okay. Also gives us a little bit more money to play with. All right. So one of our new battleships is being commissioned into the Navy. And are we about to 1906? We are. We're into 1906. Our budget is almost balanced. You can see the Almanac here. One Dreadnought is in service with the Royal Navy. Uh, no battle cruisers are in service yet, but quite a few of them are being built across the board. Uh, the Austrians aren't building any yet. Uh, the Japanese aren't building any yet. Thank God. Um, I'm going to go ahead and spend some money to increase the size of our... Oh, I'm already building larger docks. Two more months. No, wait. How many more months? Oh, seven more months till we increase the size of our docks. Damn. Hmm. Well, if we can't build larger docks, I kind of like a bigger battleship. Maybe we should design that heavy cruiser. That an interesting idea. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go with a nineteen thousand ton heavy cruiser. It, it, see, it, really, it's a battle cruiser, but. It, mm, uh, it's very much a battle cruiser, but it'll be used as kind of a as a commerce raider, I guess. Maybe we slow it to twenty eight knots and shrink the size of the vessel. Whoa, if we slow it to twenty eight knots. It saves. Wait, I'm confused. Do we just develop some new technology? Why do we have thirty five? We can make the thing thirty knots. What did I do? It must have fire control. Not have fire control. I have secondary guns of no main... Oh, I... <laughs> all right, I removed all the main guns. All right, auto design, 10-inch guns. What is going on with this ship? Why does it look so weird? Ah, screw that. Let's do this. Let's design a new ship. We'll make it a battle cruiser. We'll auto design, and we'll kind of see where we go from there. So, that's dumb. Not going to do wing firing. Fore and aft, and then we'll add, let's see here, ships, can we do that? Double turret. Uh, hmm. 
Is that legal? Do we have the midship turrets? Okay, that's fine. We're not going to do cramped. We'll do normal. 19,000 tons. Um, so now we've got a six-gun broadside at this time. We add another two turrets. That would be really great if we could. Uh, starboard aft wing? No, I don't like that. How about... Hmm. Maximum of three centerline turrets. Okay, so it can't be centerline. What about port midships wing? Okay. I'm assuming these two can shoot over the top of each other. Could be wrong. That might be mistaken. What if we do... Wing. Okay. And starboard port wing. Or sorry, forward port wing. Design's not legal. Please correct the. Okay, so it's overweight. But overall, we could do that. That would give us an eight gun broadside. Um, we could reduce the size of the guns to 10, 10 inch guns. Um, Identifies as a heavy cruiser, that's fine. You just have to change the type to a heavy cruiser. Ship is overweight, 19,000 tons. Got six inch guns as our secondary. We'll move those into single turrets. We'll switch them down to five inch guns as our secondary in turrets. So it'll be a broadside of six five inch guns on each flank of the vessel. We'll also reduce our, our tertiary batteries down to 12 three inch guns. Those can remain in casemates. So six three-inch guns, six five-inch guns on each flank, 95 guns per gun in the main turret, and actually, port broadside, every broadside, one turret each. Secondary guns reduced by 20% due to lack of accurate training and elevation gear for secondary turrets. So I guess we could switch those into casemates if that... Makes the game happy. It does. In that case, let's increase our ammo allotment. Increase our speed if we can. How do I get 1300? Maybe we reduce the belt to 8 inch. 8 inch belt. 8 inch on the turrets. Nine inch on the conning tower. God, that's not going to get us. Secondaries have four inch armor. Secondaries don't need that much armor. Three inch armor. All right. Um, ah, I don't really need the. I don't think I'm ever going to use torpedoes on here. Combinations are normal. Three boards normal. Medium range. Full fired engine priority five, five and five. Keep shrinking that secondary battery. Can't imagine how this is considered a heavy cruiser at this point. But it's basically a Blucher, except better, you know, 10 inch guns. Um, in that case, I guess maybe seven inch on the belt. Three on the belt extended, and there you go. We've got a 28-knot vessel with a 7-inch belt armor. It's got a broadside of 8 main guns, 10-inchers on each flank. Um, it's got sort of two wing turrets and then a center center line firing turret that goes both ways. Um, this is an intriguing vessel. It's, it throw, For a heavy cruiser, she's going to be interesting. Um... I'm going to name this vessel the XTRG after the XTRG YouTuber who uh, we did a, a collaboration Let's Play series with. And he always had these really interesting designs for his ships. So I'm going to go ahead and name it after him. Um, actually, I feel like it should be a long range ship, but doing that just adds such incredible weight. We made it long range, but dropped it to 727. That's the problem here. Even if I cut six.
Thank you very much for the follow, Volmrax. Huh. All right, what if we cut the belt extended to two? So we could have a main belt armor of six inches. This is getting dangerously light uh, for our main, our main armor. Um, it is a long range. Principally, it's going to be a commerce raider, I think. So in that sense, I think I'm okay with it because the odds of it ever facing off against a truly elite enemy is, um, you know, uh, limited. I think we'll drop the turret armor down to seven. Let's see if we can get the belt up to six and a half. Yeah, can we get it to seven? We drop the turret armor slightly. Belt armor up to seven and a half. Yeah. Um, conning tower, let's get that up to ten if we can. We can. Turret armor to six and a half would be great. Don't know. see there we go all right two and a half inches on the top of the turret six and a half inches on the turret seven and a half inches on the belt uh deck extended 1.5 deck 2.5 belt extended to 27 knots and boy does it fling a strong broadside the xtrg class gonna go ahead and complete the design ship saved and then we're going to go ahead and build two of them right away. They're going to be expensive beast, $4.3 million per turn build cost. Uh, but we've got to put those ship makers to, to work. We'll go ahead and uh, name one. Well, ah, I didn't build any. Let's go ahead and build one. It'll be the XTRG. Uh, generate random name for the ship. Actually, it's $2 million per, per ship. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and build a second. We're going to go ahead and name this one the Tortuga. Uh, from our other collaborator in that live uh, stream series. And there you go. Both of these vessels are larger and faster than our pre-Dreadnought battleships that are currently being constructed. Uh, they will take just shy of three years to complete. But even when they come out, when they're, when they're completed, I do think they're going to be relevant as vessels for quite some time because of that fast speed, that long range, and that heavy main armament. Frankly, they're going to be more than a match for anything the Japanese likely have in their main battle line, just because of the, that heavy armament that they fling. The Japanese are still not building any uh, Dreadnought-class battleships, uh, and I'm kind of hoping they're our next uh, adversary in, in war. But let's go ahead and uh, move forward a turn. You can see we have more battleships commissioning into the Navy that's bringing some additional funds into our coffers. As those ships complete, you can see here our monthly balance improves. Shipbuilding has increased the size of our docks. The steel industry wants a stronger navy. They want to help convince the Tsar to increase naval expenditures. What do you do? Mention the importance of the navy, increase budget and tensions. Tell them we're not a tool for increasing their profits. That'll increase our prestige, which again is the name of the game in this game. So we can now build 20,000 ton vessels and we can now, um, well, that's kind of the big call out here. We can build 20,000 ton vessels. New heavy cruisers. The U.S. government's offering to sell us rights to the superimposed turret B for 4.3 million. Yes, we need this technology for sure. All right. So we now have superimposed turret B. Improved armor weight savings. And I'm going to build my first dreadnought class here in just a few moments when our uh, ship shipyards get just 1,000 tons bigger here. Soaring as new methods and technology are introduced. Okay. Let's see, a regional war seems imminent in the Balkans. One of our major arms manufacturers wants to step up exports to the likely belligerents. What's your action? Avoid stoking the fires. A strong arms industry is a garden, blah, blah, blah. Tensions and budget. Okay. Tensions are low enough that I'm not really that worried about them. All right, new docks completed. Elena, thank you very much for the follow. A major arms firm wants to sell ships to South American country. This will be good for our arms industry. Strong arms industry is the foundation for a strong navy. Allow it. Uh, I don't really care. I'm not worried about our technology. Our technology is already behind as it is. So there you go. We can build up to a 22,000 ton vessel. I think I'm going to do that. We've got these two heavy cruisers, which are commerce raiders already under construction. Let's go ahead and design our first dreadnought class battleship. Let's, go, let's take a look here. Japan is still not building any dreadnoughts, which is awesome for us. Um, I know tensions with them are not not higher than either Britain or Germany, but I'm kind of hoping 
that if a war comes, that it's with Japan, because they do have some colonies that we can try and take. So let's go ahead and design a battleship. We'll go ahead and auto-design the initial ship of the class. You can see here the initial reaction is to have one four. So this is actually similar to the design we made for our heavy cruiser. It'll fling eight main gun main uh, shells in either direction for its broadside. Looks a little bit prettier than the one we have. Only two uh, funnels, which is interesting. Um, Twelve inch guns. The caliber on those guns or the quality on those guns kind of sucks, which is a little bit frustrating. But it is what it is. 10-inch belt armor, 21, in, 21 knot speed, 22,000 uh, tons. Uh, are we using a superimposed turret B? Why are we not adding a superimposed turret? Ford superimposed. Can have a maximum of three centerline turrets. That's fine. We'll go ahead and delete that aft turret. Whoa! Not that aft. Okay. So there you go. We'll have the, the superimposed turret in the front. Uh, as well as the uh, other Ford turret here, um, along with the amidships turret, if you will. Can we do, let's see, this is Ford, or this is starboard wing, port wing. Can we do uh, midship? Oh, well, that's the center line, so we've got to remove. Can we do starboard aft wing and port aft wing? Do we have the technology to support that? The ship has less torpedo protection, not legal, seriously overweight. Okay, so we could do that, theoretically. We could have a 10-gun broadside, um, two midship turrets in the middle and two in the rear, a superimposed and a forward turret, and then a rear turret. Um, I just wonder if it's worth it. This thing is has crazy, uh, a, a huge... Um, broadside weight. We could cut the speed to 20 knots, which I think is more reasonable. I wonder if we used... If we do... Maybe in U.S. yards? A 23,000 ton ship? It's us closer. I hate to use Austro-Hungarian yards, given that we were at war with them. But we could make a 24,000 ton vessel here. Um... Still doesn't have adequate that down the gun ammo down a bit five rounds maybe still too many too many turrets not enough weight just do this auto design a ship of the local yards I'm always a fan of local industry um we'll slow it to twenty knots we'll remove that aft center line we'll go ahead and Add the superimposed Ford turret. Let's see here. 90 rounds per gun, 12 inches. Uh, need more secondary than that. If we're only going to have four inchers on the secondaries, we'll kind of spike that up a bit. Maybe we'll have 24 inch guns. Our armor is 10 inches, which I guess is okay. I really wish I had a better. Go ahead and make it a 22,000 ton ship. Go ahead and make it and a half inch. And a half? What can we do to make it 20, 12 inches on the... Drop the belt extended to three. Extended. Wolf Canada, thank you very much for the follow. Go ahead and drop the turrets down to 10. Or top is three, that's fine. Secondaries should probably have an inch of armor. Um, maybe we have... This is, I think, where we want to go to a foreign yard here. I don't know why... I guess there are tensions with France. All of these other countries have tensions that are too high. So I guess we'll go to the U.S. for our building. And we'll make it a 23,000 ton battleship, 20 knots. Um... I like the 12 inch armor on the main belt. I think we need to save a little bit of weight somewhere. I still like the 24 inch guns as our sort of secondary. There's no reason, really, in my opinion, to have torpedoes on a battleship, so that'll save us some weight. Um, you know, 
U.S. has the best industry, I think. Probably. Coming to I really like the idea. Secondary. Like, I don't know if an inch is enough to protect against shrapnel or whatnot, but I guess it's going to have to be what it is. So it's going to be normal engine priority, normal range, 23,000 tons built in foreign yards in the United States, 12-inch main gunner, main uh, belt with a broadside of eight 12-inch guns, 20 4-inch guns in the secondaries, and who should we name this particular class after? Uh, still don't have any fire control. Oops. So that's going to add some weight. I don't know why it doesn't... Why does it allow you to not have fire control? That seems like a, a problem. Um, do we drop the belt to 11 and a half? Get a little bit of weight back? The thing is, I could build it in Austria and get additional weight, but the challenge that I have there is then... Um, I think Austrian yards are going to build more slowly. I think the U.S. has sort of like production bonuses. Certain countries have underdeveloped shipbuilding industries, which hurts production speeds. So that's why I kind of like the idea of building these in the U.S. Name these after the illustrious follower on our YouTube channel and on Twitch, Elena. The Elena class. Um, let's see here, 20 knots, 23,000 tons. 11 and a half inch. No, I don't know if I like this ship. Really wanted the 12 inch main, main armor. All right, but we could bump that up to one and a half for our secondaries to give a little bit more protection. Granted, they're in the casemate, so I think they get some benefit from the belt armor as well. I think that's what we'll go with. U.S., if we build them in foreign yards, it would be nice if we could have better caliber guns, but I guess we can't. All right, all right, all right. I think this is good. I do declare this will be the battleship of the future for the Russian Federation. The Elena class, our first dreadnought class, indeed. All okay, we'll go ahead and build them. We're going to go ahead and build two of these things. We'll name one the Elena. It's going to cost $2.6 million. Building in the United States. Wait, why would we generate a random name if it's, that's the ship? It's going to cost $5 million just to lay down. All right, well, at least it names it after the right person. Um, let's go ahead and build a second one here. Let's see. I should follow. I should follow another. Add another person in here that we we'll name it after in the chat. We'll name it the Dane class or the Dane, the uh, Russian battleship Dane. All right, everybody. I'm gonna go ahead and jump in here and end this particular video. We are uh, continuing our let's play as Russia. We have designed our first battleship. We've also designed what I would argue is our first battle cruiser. Uh, it might be classified in the game as a heavy cruiser because of maybe the main gun armor, but at the end of the day, it's incredibly fast, incredibly light armed, and very heavily gunned. Uh, so I would like to classify it as a battle cruiser. But that's where we're at right now. We're trying to bring, bring Russian arms back up to snuff and catch them up with our adversaries. Uh, we will continue this series in sort of a delicate balancing of the budgets here as we try and build out the Russian fleet without bankrupting and overthrowing the Russian regime. regime. But uh, we'll deal with that next time. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. Let me know your thoughts below as always. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching. And I'm out.